Hello everyone, in this video, I'm gonna help you understand the new AWS certified generative AI developer professional exam. It's currently in beta at the time of this recording. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through the AWS certification portfolio, the certifications that are relevant to this one in terms of a pathway, if you're coming through from say a, a beginner or an intermediate level, and then right through to this new professional certification. I'm gonna walk through the details, show you the exam guide from AWS, and help you understand what you need to do in if you want to get certified and work in this industry. Now, there is absolutely huge demand at the moment for people with these particular skills. So generative AI skills, machine learning skills, AI skills are really in high demand. So if you have strong skills with practical experience in this area, then there's more demand than there is supply in terms of people who have these skills in the market today. So definitely an exciting place to be. So let's jump into it. I'm on the AWS certification webpage here. And if we just scroll down, I'm gonna walk you through some of these certifications that are relevant if you're moving towards this new professional level certification. Now, the first one would be here, the foundational level. This is the AWS certified AI practitioner. Now, AI is fairly broad. It essentially means anything that mimics human intelligence. So here, what we're learning is some of the fundamentals, things also like not just what AI is and the capabilities it might provide to a business, but also what are some of the ethical concerns, the security concerns, that type of thing. It will go into machine learning at a very high level, a little bit of gen AI, a bit about prompt engineering, that type of stuff. But this is the foundational level, so it's not too difficult. It's the first step if you're building generative AI and general AI and machine learning skills. Next, after the foundational level, we have the associate certifications. Now, what we have here, are there's two certifications that are relevant to people who are working in machine learning and AI. The first, as you can see here, would be the machine learning engineer associate. It's a relatively new certification. And here you'll go a lot into things like how to train machine learning models, how to validate and test ML pipelines, that type of thing. So a lot about machine learning. Now, machine learning, is essentially what we're using for generative AI, but it's some of the underlying capabilities, some of the actual models and the training that takes place in order to provide a generative AI capability. So that's very important. Now, the other one is the AWS certified data engineer associate. Now, data engineering, machine learning, very closely related. They're slightly different disciplines, but that's also a very useful certification for anyone who wants to work in this industry, in machine learning, in AI, in gen AI. So as it says here, this is about designing data models, managing data life cycles, and ensuring data quality. So that's all we had until recently. Now, until recently, the only certification you could do after that was jumping down here past the professional level into these special now, specialties are actually kind of sit alongside in reality to professional level. They're about the same level of difficulty, sometimes a little bit easier, sometimes a little bit harder. And what we have here is this machine learning specialty certification. So that would be the next level for people who are going deep into this subject matter where you're going to go into advanced machine learning. So uh, training models, validating and testing. Now, this one is actually being retired. So what AWS is seeing in the industry is there's a strong shift towards generative AI, specifically things like AI agents. So the implementation of AI ag agents and agentic workflows is absolutely huge in the enterprise today. A very large number of enterprises are experimenting and deploying agentic AI workflows. So that's where the real demand is in the enterprise industry today. And AWS are reacting to that. So what they're doing is they're retiring the machine learning specialty, and then they're bringing out this new one. So the Gen AI Developer Professional. So let's have a look at this certification. So if I go onto the web page for this certification, we'll just scroll down a little way here. And you can see at the time that I'm recording this, beta registration is open. So what AWS does when they release a new exam is they often provide a beta opportunity so usually that means a longer, more difficult exam at a lower cost, and it gives you an opportunity to get access to the exam material earlier on. Now, what benefit is that to you? Not huge, other than a slightly lower cost. It's really a help for AWS, if anything. It means that they're able to collect data, make sure that they're aligning the question difficulties correctly, uh, and it's usually
probably a little bit harder than the actual final exam. So uh, you, you would be putting yourself into a more difficult situation with the beta, uh, but you'll be helping AWS gather data and, uh, and finalize the certification. So currently it is in beta format, 205 minutes of exam with 85 questions. The final exam will be 65 questions. So let's have a look at some of the details of this exam here. Now, as you can see, beta registration is currently open. By the time you watch this video, that might have passed. So I think the final exam will be around February 26, but I don't think they've released that date at this time. Uh, but beta registration is open. Now, a beta exam is essentially a way to get access to the exam earlier on. Now, it's not really a benefit for you as much as it is AWS. I think you might get a slight discount on the exam cost, but you have more questions in the exam, a longer time, and it can be a bit more difficult. That's my experience of doing beta exams. Really, it's a help for AWS. It helps them to gather data so that they can work out if the exam is aligned correctly in terms of the difficulty of the questions. Maybe they've made some errors as well, and they'll get that feedback. And then the final exam will come out based on that information. So currently, that's the status. By the time you watch this video, that might not be the case. Now, the beta exam is 205 minutes and 85 questions. The final exam, I believe, will be 65 questions. So it is a longer exam you are putting yourself uh, in for something a little bit harder. Uh, testing options as usual, online, proctored, or going to a testing center. Now, I'll cover the exam guide in just a moment. Let's just have a look down a little bit further here, uh, and we can get to who should take this exam. So it says here that the target candidate should have two or more years of experience building production grade applications on AWS or with open source technologies, gen AI, ML, or data engineering experience, and one year of hands-on experience implementing gen AI solutions. Now you do wanna take this somewhat seriously because professional level exams are difficult. Now, it doesn't mean that you do actually have to have real world experience of two or more years. What I would say, however, is you wanna be very, very well prepared. You wanna make sure that you've been doing a lot of practice. So we certainly have students in our company who get through to professional level exams without ever actually working in the industry. And they do that by making sure that they cover lots of hands-on exercises, build out project portfolios, uh, and get very hands-on skilled. So it's not just about theory. Having the hands-on skills is really going to help you when you get to this level because professional level exams are very tricky and they will identify any gaps in your knowledge or experience. So you want to make sure that you've got the necessary skills and knowledge before you go in to sit this exam. Now, as I said, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a job in the industry, but it does mean you need to do quite a bit of study beforehand, and I would recommend doing some other courses before you do this one. And I'll show you what those are in just a moment, because in fact, AWS themselves have documented that. So here they say, what certification should I earn before taking this exam? Now, what they mentioned here, the AI practitioner, definitely recommended because that's gonna give you that foundational level knowledge. Then the solutions architects associate, why would you do that? Well, it's not because you're trying to become a solutions architect, but the solutions architect associate is a broad certification that covers a lot of AWS services. And that means it helps you build out a more rounded knowledge of AWS. So very, very useful. Then you've got the machine learning engineer associate. So now you're going deeper into machine learning. You've got the data engineer associate. And so they say you might want to do one or more of these before you get to the pro level. Now I would say at least a couple of these. So I would say you want to do the Solutions Architects show Associate, the AI Practitioner, and the Machine Learning Engineer Associate, possibly the Data Engineer Associate as well, but uh, that's up to you. But I would say that you want to get those certifications first, or at least make sure that your level of knowledge is up to the level of those exams. Now, just coming back up here, how will this help you with your career? Well, that's a very brief overview there, but as I mentioned before, there is a lot of opportunity in this industry. Gen AI is exploding, Agentic AI is something that's in super high demand at the moment. So if you can get yourself up to this level, you really are differentiating yourself. We are in a time at the moment where people talk about job losses, people talk about AI replacing jobs. Well, these are the jobs that matter. These are the jobs where you can earn the most. I've seen that the average pay over time, if you look on Indeed, for example, indeed.com, and you look at the average pay for machine learning engineer experts and gen AI experts, it's going up all the time. And that's because of the demand. The demand is higher than the supply. The supply being people who have the right skills. There's not enough of those people in order to fill the job roles. So in other areas of this industry, it's the opposite. 
So it's not a good time to be in the industry for some other job roles, like becoming a developer, for example. But it's a really good time for people with these skills. Now, if you just scroll down a little bit further here, um, it mentions a little bit about Beecher exams. Again, it's about helping AWS to, uh, to gather data, essentially. So by all means, go ahead and do it if that's your interest. I've done Beecher exams before, usually because as a trainer and someone creating training courses, I want to see the exam as soon as possible so I can start building out the content. Um, but otherwise, for most people, I would recommend and just waiting until the final exam is released. And also there'll be more training opportunities then as well in terms of training courses. Now the exam guide is accessible right here, but I already opened it up for you and blew it up a little bit so you can see it more easily. So this gives us the details of the exam. So the exam code is the AIP C01, first version of this exam. And so it goes into some detail here about what exactly this exam uh, is validating in terms of your knowledge and capability. So design and implement solutions by using vector stores, retrieval, augmented generation, knowledge bases, and other gen AI architectures. Integrating foundation models into applications and business workflows. Prompt engineering and management techniques. Implement agentic AI solutions. So again, agentic AI, RAG, uh, gen AI, all of these are super important topics for business businesses today because this is where they're doing the most experimentation and the most implementation with AI. And that's where they're driving the most value with AI. So we've been over the target candidate description. Again, just as a reminder, make sure that you've got some other AWS certifications before you get here. Uh, definitely recommended to have the AI, ML, maybe the solutions architect. Now the recommended AWS knowledge here is again, helping you to ensure that you have the right skills before you come into this. And I would recommend that before you come into any training courses for this specific exam, you wanna have that sort of general experience of compute storage and networking on AWS, security and identity management, IAC, monitoring and observability, services and cost optimization. That's why certifications like the Solutions Architect Associate are very useful. Maybe the Cloud Ops engineer as well. It shows you here what's out of scope. So model development and training, not a big focus here. Advanced ML techniques, same again. Of course, these would have been more of a focus in the machine learning specialty, which is now being retired, and data engineering and feature engineering. The data engineering piece, again, is in the DEA, the Data Engineer Associate. So that's why that's still a good background course, but it's not in scope for this particular exam. Now, we can see the question types here. This is pretty standard across AWS exams, multiple choice, multiple response. Ordering and matching sometimes show up. They seem to have this on all of the exam guides now, uh, but I don't always see the questions in the exam in those forms. Formats. So it does depend on the exam. So it remains to be seen whether those formats are included. We just go down a little way. So exam results, it does tell us here, the exam pass score is 750 points out of a thousand. So roughly 75% there. And if we come down to the content outline, these are the domains of the exam. So it's just the way that they're organizing content and helping you understand how it's weighted in terms of its coverage in the exam. So we have foundation model integration, data management and compliance then implementation and integration, safety, security and governance, operational efficiency and optimization for Gen AI applications, and then testing validation and troubleshooting. Now, after that, it goes into a lot of detail about the exact skills and topics that are going to be included in the scope. I'm not gonna walk through that exhaustively. You can look up this exam guide and find this. Of course, at Digital Cloud Training, if you come and train with us, then we're gonna make sure that we cover all of these topics so that you are well prepared for the exam. Now, I hope that was useful to you. And if you want to learn more about this topic, then make sure you subscribe to our channel. We'll be releasing new content all the time. And if you're interested in training with me and my team, Team, check out our options in the description of this video, such as our Cloud Mastery Bootcamp, which is our live training program.